I got cheese, no underwear, and Duke cookie face. We just keep rolling. <laughs> What's shaking? Welcome back to the All In Podcast with Rick Jordan. I'm here today with Nick Shelton. Nick, how's it going? Going wonderfully. Thanks Good for one, having man. me. Wonderfully. That's fantastic. <laughs> Dude, say that again because that was like the way you said it was just like, I mean, it was almost like smooth jazz. Well, thank you. It's going wonderfully. Wow. Mm, I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a wonderful podcast. And at the end, we'll say, hey, it's still going wonderfully. Yes. Love it. So, man, we're going to jump right into this because your site is connectedintrovert.com. And I'm curious about this because I'm guessing you're an introvert, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's awesome. And you're a wonderful introvert, too, of course. The, you wrote a book called The Introvert's Guide to World Domination. And I, I see this title, man, and it's almost like a, like a conundrum, almost like an oxymoron, right? Because a lot of extroverts, I'm an extrovert, a lot of extroverts, I don't believe this, but they feel that in order to get out there, in order to network, and we were talking about your photo here too, that I have in front of me to where you're in front of a private jet, drinking a nice glass of scotch. This is not a photo for an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't think so. For sure, but you've you've been able to channel this, man, and that, that's what I, why I'm really excited to talk to you today, is channel your inner and your, your probably outer extroverts into some amazing success and something that can really inspire other people. So do, what was your inspiration behind your book? Oh, well, the initial thing was I would I'd do public speaking and people would say, where can I get your book? And I didn't have a book. So I said, I, I need to have a book. So I wrote the book, but uh, I wanted to, to let introverts know that they can be wildly successful in a world that's built for and by extroverts. You know, all you have to do is just know what to do, uh, because I, when I was looking for resources myself to be able to uh, upgrade my life and lifestyle and, uh, you know, with the introversion and a little bit of shyness and social awkwardness, uh, there were no resources. There are resources out there, but they're, they're not for people like me, people like us, the, the introverts. So I, I had to be in the trenches and figure it out. And then once I figured it out, people would ask me, hey, so how do you do it? And then so, you know, I wanted there to be more resources out there. So I put the book out because uh, uh, a mentor of mine had said, people always talk about going all in. I'm going to go all in, but you can't go all in if you don't know what to do. So I put together this book so people will know what to do so they can get out there. Isn't that like kind of like a typical introvert scenario is like, oh, you need to go all in, right? And then you get there, it's like, wait a second, what's my first step? What do I have to right. do here? Yeah, and it, uh, and then it almost like, a, you know, I, my wife is an introvert, so it's almost like a, you get back into yourself, or at least from what I see her do in those moments. And then it's like, I, I don't know what to do, so I don't know how to take that first step. And then I'm right back to being an introvert. There's something you said, though, that the world is built by and for extroverts. Yeah, you know, could you yes. expound on that a little bit more of what you mean by that? Because I, th I think I know, and I, th I'm, I'm sure I agree. But yeah, well, it seems like everything is set up for people that just run and step out into the spotlight, and they're like, "Hey, everybody!" You know, so if you are more of the uh, uh, in the shadows person, just kind of flying, flying beneath the radar, you're going to miss out on so many opportunities and and meeting people that you want to meet and being included, being heard, because you're just you're saying, hey, you know, I'm just going to kind of be over here. But, you know, you're just as qualified, just as intelligent as everybody else. But uh, this world seems to uh, shine favor on people that, you know, that just run out there and, and, and bask in that, in that spotlight. So you, know? you were in the Air Force, right? Yes. And first, thank you for serving. I really appreciate you for that. Yeah, you're and welcome. Second, how did that help? Because <laughs> I'm sure that it did. You know, how, oh, how, yes. how, did, how did that that journey, at least that part of your journey, help you get to where you're at right now to, to really take on world domination as an introvert? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, uh, one part was it uh, it helped me get out into the world, you know, uh, on an international scene. But I'd say the, the main 
biggest takeaway from the military was they take complicated things and they they break them down into simple steps so that anyone can do it. Uh, so everyone knows about the making the bed in the military. Everyone's heard about that or seen a movie. And, you know, if somebody just walked into a room with a bed and said, hey, make this in the military style, you'd say, I don't know how to do that. But if they, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, here's the first step, second step, third step. And then by, uh, you know, not too much time passes and everybody, even you could be a genius or you could be not a genius and everyone can make that bed the same way because they have those steps. And so I took a page from that and said, how can I make networking for introverts kind of the same way? Because at the beginning, if you're saying, well, how would I do that? It's so complicated. But if you break it down into simple steps and all you have to do is just follow the steps, then anybody can do it. Interesting concept, man, because it's a uh... Networking is such a huge, important part of not even just for entrepreneurs. Even if you're just at a, at a job or something like that, there's so much that depends on your interaction with other people. Uh, there's a, in, in the IT space that I'm in, there's two types of IT people that I see. One are those who are great at coding, maybe, that love tackling and staring at the screens, but maybe they should not have too much human interaction because they're not that type of person, you know? But then there's also the, cl then there's the client facing ones. And both have just this amazing genius in their own worlds, in their own realms. And my question is how, because I, I feel like those backroom people really should step out front at some point in time, really should get to interact with everybody else around them because that's not only how to just advance their careers, it's how to advance themselves as a person too. What's that first step to coming out of that back room, even metaphorically? Right, so they're going to, they, they need to be heard and seen if they're just in the back room and uh, not being able to have those interactions, then they're going to miss out on uh, any sorts of opportunities that they might want to take part in. And then whoever they're working for, they're not, there's going to be some miscommunication. There's going to be a lot of things missed in there. So you're not going to get the full fullness of it. It's not going to be all it could be. Yeah. The, so the introverts, they like the back room though, right? See, I'm an extrovert yes. and this is curious to me. I'm, this is why I was so excited to talk to you, man, because I love getting inside each other's heads. You probably yes. understand me more than what I understand you. And that's why I'm asking the questions Oh yeah, because as Maybe. an introvert, you want to stay in that room, right? You don't necessarily well, want to go people. out. Okay. So, let's dive into because, that. Because Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, there's a, there's a lot of thoughts about introverts. And, and so people automatically assume that introverts are also shy and socially awkward and all that sort of stuff. But it really means that you just uh, get drained by being out in the spotlight or around people. And then you have to go and recharge by yourself. And then, but a lot of times introverts are also shy and or socially awkward, but not necessarily so. And so some introverts do like to be isolated and say, I'm just going to be in this back room and I don't care what's going on out there. I'm just going to be here. But then there are others like myself and there's many, many others that say, I, you know, I still enjoy my alone time to, to recharge, but I would like to have the opportunity to uh, go out there and, and there, there's so, there's a big world out there. I'd like to be able to do some stuff, but I just need to be able to do it on my terms that aren't going to compromise me and my energy. And so, uh, like, so if I go out to a social event, I might not do the whole, like a five hour thing where I'm, uh, you know, carrying people around the room or anything like that, uh, singing for he's a jolly good fellow. I could just, I, you know, <laughs> cause I could totally I, see you doing that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that song specifically, man, <laughs> go ahead. Like, give me a few bars right now. Okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I might, I might, I might want to be able to make, uh, so, okay. So here's a good, uh, example. So everyone's heard, well, most people have heard the sayings, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time around and show me your friends. I'll show you your future. And so, you know, not that you're just going to get rid of your friends and say, I'm, I've upgraded my friends. These are my friends now, but you, you want to add in, uh, some people that, that you admire that, that are doing things that you want to do. Uh, and so then that way you'll, you'll get some mentors in there. You'll get, uh, people with habits that you want to develop. If they're around you, then some of those habits are going to rub off on you. And then that helps bring you up. It's a push and pull thing. And so, 
uh, if you're just sitting in that back room, then you, it, some people don't care and they'll say, I'll just be here. But then other people say, I would like to be able to have access to that, but how do I find these people? And wherever they are, how do I get there? Then when I get there, how do I engage with them? And then how do I maintain those relationships? And so a lot of methods out there, they start somewhere in the middle. And uh, like you were saying with your wife, she would say, well, what's my first step? You know, if you're looking at resources that start you in the middle, then you're still kind of stuck. But if you have, okay, number one, you know, I need to show up. You have to pick something and show up. Uh, so for example, uh, it, there's, there are, uh, let's see, organizations out there that you might either want to be a part of, or you might want to meet the type of people that go to that sort of thing. So I, I like to use beekeeping uh, as an example. So <laughs> okay. you, you, you just, you know, cause it stands out in your mind when I talk about it. So uh, you're right. That's all I'm thinking about now. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so, I, so all I can think about wanted... is Napuris and some delicious honey. I might have to have some honey for lunch. <laughs> and it could be glass blowing, or it could be, uh, you know, I, I, Honey, that's good. crazy. I mean, I'm squirreling now, but uh, those things are so obscure, you know, and you don't right. think about those, but they're also both creative because now my mind immediately, now you've got both of those stuck in my head. Thanks. Anyways, right. continue. And so, right. Yes. I might say, you know, I want to get into glass blowing, or I would like to meet the type of people that are in the glass blowing. So then I would pick out an event and I would uh, sign up for it. And then, you know, you have to show up. But here's a tip for your listeners that, uh, you know, during these times where there might not be an event to go to, what they can do, it's, what's really helpful is what I call being pre known. And so here's a good step that everyone can do right now is you can find an event. So let's say the, the glass blowing and you would, uh, or I like beekeeping. Let's go to beekeeping, beekeeping. And you find an event and then you'd sign up for that. And then every event or organization has social media attached to it. And they'll have a, uh, a chat forum or chat room. So then you'll just go in there. And so any introverted, even in the back room, people can do this because you're not leaving the house yet. You just go into the chat room. You see who the three or four voices are that are carrying most of the conversations. And then you're just going to interact lightly, maybe ask a question or compliment, say, hey, that's a good point. Never thought of that. And you're just going to get engaged a little bit so they get used to seeing your name pop up. And then when the actual event is coming around that you're going to show up to, You'll say, so say it's Jack and Susan or something. You'll say, hey, Jack, hey, Susan, uh, I'm going to that event. I'm looking forward to putting a face with a name and seeing you there. And they'll say, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing you too. So now when you show up, you're not just walking into a cold room trying to figure it out. You're walking in uh, pre-known. It's like a pre, pre-approved credit card. Now you just have to sign and you're good to go. So you, when you walk in, you're looking for someone. They're looking for you. And usually if they're strong in that uh, chat forum, they're going to be strong and known in that group. And so now you're going in, you're, you're meeting people from the top down versus just going in guessing and trying to figure it out. You're going to meet them. They're going to introduce you to whoever it is that they feel you should meet. And you've already, it's just a really easy way to go into a situation versus just walking into a cold room. But you have to pick an event and, and do a little bit of a, groundwork first and then show up <laughs> so you're saying as an introvert there's more homework that's really <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's easy it's really easy to do that's interesting so i get that so it's a pre-connect you know which isn't bad in general wh whatsoever because you're you're doing research i mean even when you have a sales engagement you want to do some research ahead of time on who on who you're going to speak with so if you're going right. to an event, I mean, I'm assuming when you're in front of this private jet, you knew all these beautiful women that are on here before you walked in, right? <laughs> you pre-connected with them? You did not. Why no, not, I man? Didn't, well, you... I didn't know pre-connection with that. That was uh, <laughs> So this was before uh, pre-connect days. <laughs> right. I just went in. I just went in with the plan because, uh, like I tell people, if you just go into a cold situation where you don't know anyone, uh, walk in, walk straight over to the food. There's always food and drink somewhere, usually, or if there's no food, then there'll be at least water or coffee or something. Walk over there, and that's where you're going to uh, get settled in. You're going to grab, if there's you know cookies or something, grab three cookies and grab your drink, and then you can make a comment about the cookies. Hey, chocolate chip, 
I thought they were going to have the peanut butter cookies. Or, you know, you could say last time they had giant pretzels. I guess they don't trust us with the cheese after that cheese incident. You know, there's, uh, <laughs> there's, this, <laughs> there's so many comments you could make about the food, you know, <laughs> as an example. <laughs> Jeez, and, I guess. I don't know why that's so, so funny. That's but just... Then from the food, you can scope out, yeah. like, where do you want to mm-hmm. sit? You're, and I always say arrive early because that way you're, you're not, if you're an introvert, you don't want to be fashionably late and then try to figure Dude, stuff I, out. I need to know, is that a line that you have or something that you walk in with to talk about the cheese? Is, a, <laughs> is that like something you have in like your portfolio that you always bring with to the networking events is a, a cheese line? I'm asking because it, I was in an event before and it was an introvert, but he was a love expert, right? And he okay. was talking about how in order to, to, he was an introvert, but he wanted to be this really cool guy with women. So he went through and started rehearsing like 100 different pickup lines or 100 different comments so that he would always be interesting. Or, you know, then he'd have 20 stories that he would memorize. So every time he would go into a bar, he would always talk about one of the, or one of these 100 pickup lines or one of these 20 stories with different women. So he'd always have these things rehearsed. So that's why I'm asking, he right. was an introvert, right? So that's why I'm asking him. Mean, yes. You talk about, they don't trust us with the cheese. That's why I was cracking up. I immediately <laughs> went to this love expert who's an introvert. And I'm curious, right. is that, is that a lot? You know, do you have something like that where you have like a 30, you know, a list of 30 different things that you can walk in with and say these things and they always work for you? So usually I don't because I, I love doing the observation. I'm really good at the observation. I do when I coach people, I tell them if you're not good at observation, then you should memorize a few things just like that. But uh, I like to just look around and I'm looking. So I'd look at you. I'd notice that jacket like that you have. And I'd comment about that. I'd comment about the food. I'd comment about, Hey, uh, it's hot in here. I, I saw a movie back in the eighties where they turned the thermostat up to try to get girls to take their clothes off. And, uh, to, you know, I tried that and it doesn't work. So all it does is make them leave. See, these are you too know, easy for you, man. This is what I'm saying. Uh, You've <laughs> got to use the, you, you probably have used these exact lines a lot of times, right? I like that one better than the cheese thing, but you know, they're, they're both pretty great. Right. So you'd say, if I would have known they're going to have it this hot in here, I would have worn better underwear, you know, all that sort of stuff. There's all kinds of, there's, there's just fantastic. Yeah, so, so that's just some observational stuff, but yeah, you can have stuff memorized as well. But if you go to the food, you can get a good layout and you can talk about the food. You can talk about anything you observe. Hey, I was in the men's room. They had art hanging on the wall in there. This is a fancy place. I'm going to put my pinky out when I drink my my coffee. You know, <laughs> Dude, you're fantastic. I love it. So, <laughs> what like line that. did you use on one of these women in this <laughs> this photo? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> because your underwear line, I'm sure some would take it okay, and some not so. <laughs> some not so. We were okay. talking about the food. The food at that event, the was cheese, right? Exceptional. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about the cheese. Oh my god. So, uh, so we've talked about how to inject yourself in the social circles now. So afterwards, and we talked about the pre-connect, how do you maintain these cir- these circles as an introvert? Because that's even like another part of the skill set, right? Right. And uh, relationship main- maintenance is most people suck at it, regardless of it, if you're an introvert or extrovert, most people are horrible at maintaining the relationships. So this, anyone listening, please pay attention to this part. And so what, what I advise people to do is quarterly. So every three months, go through your, your telephone, your uh, contacts list on your phone, that's both personal and business, and then your email list, both personal and business, and make a list of everyone you have not talked to in the past three months that you should talk to. And once you have that list, you don't have to do it all in one day, set a week aside, and then every day just chip away at it. And what I like to do is either... Make a phone call and just say, you know, how are you doing? Just thinking about you. How would the knee surgery go? How's the new baby? You know, all that sort of thing. And then tell them what you're up to. And then, or if I don't make a phone call, I'll do a video on my phone. So that way they can see me. And it's more personal than like just sending a text or something like that. I'll make a video. Hey, how's the, uh, you know, you were painting the house. How'd that turn out? Uh, you know, what's going on at the, the brokerage firm? And then I'll tell them what I'm up to. Hey, I got this book, you know, that sort of thing. And then what happens is you, you're fresh on their mind now. And now they've been updated about you. They'll respond to you. You get updated on them. So, you know, because the worst thing is 
if six years pass and then somebody calls you up and says, hey, uh, can you do me this favor? And then you say, I haven't talked to you in six years. What's going on? Then you call me and ask me for something. But if if they've been keeping in touch and you'll know about them, they know about you, then if there's any opportunities that you think might be a good fit for them, you'll know what stage they're at, what projects they're working on. You can plug them in and say, hey, I was thinking about you. This this opening came up with this company and I think you'd be a good fit. Or if if they, they can help you in some way, they say, hey, you know, I heard that you were working on this project. Hey, maybe this could help. Yeah, let me introduce you to this person. So it it really helps uh, keep you on top of their mind and Oh, them, no joke. You know, you know, and, and vice versa. Dude, so, that video thing is an awesome tip. It really is. I did that with a friend of mine the other day, too. It was his birthday. You know, and, you know, text messaging is, is an easy out, so to speak, for a lot of those things. You know, whereas a phone call is more committed if, if you want to talk to the person. But, I mean, I really do like this dude. But, you know, it's so simple even maintaining those relationships. You just pick up your freaking phone like this, and it's just like, hey, I'm just thinking about you, and I just wanted to – tell you that I hope you're having an awesome day. So I hope you are and have an amazing day. I'll talk to you soon. Thinking about you. Bye-bye. And th that's that's it, right? If I can stop it. There we go. But yeah, but that's it. But I did that to, and immediately. He picked up the phone and called me back and said, man, this made my day. Nobody else sent me a video today. I got like a slew of text messages and nobody else sent me a video today. I really appreciate you, man. This is what I'm doing. And then we had a phone conversation too. But I mean, this is almost like willing. The video is almost like saying it's so unique and there's not many people that do it. I, I'm glad to hear that you do it because it's fun. I don't do it often because I think it might be overplayed if you do it all the time. You know, but then I have one individual. Who, exactly. Yes, because it, there are ways to overdo some of this stuff too. Versus a text message, there has to be a good balance. I have uh, another thing is an audio message, you know, and it's fantastic because even though it's not video, whatever, but an audio message, I get those a lot. That's actually somewhat easier at sometimes to do an audio message and text message, <laughs> and I get this from, but most of the time from one of my directors on my board. He'll send me an audio message a lot of times, and most of the time, if it's a text message, it's completely business related, you know, or like an article or something like that. But usually, his audio messages are just saying, "Hey, man, I just want to let you know I'm thinking about you today, and I believe in you." And those are always his audio messages, man. They're just always uplifting. So when I see an audio message and I know it's from him, I'm like, oh my gosh, I get excited, you know, because I, <laughs> I know this is the guy that does this, you know, and then I start thinking, it's like, oh, I'm going to listen to this thing right now. You know, I'm almost like, I'll turn off music. I'll stop a phone conversation, whatever. If I see that come through because I want to listen to it right now, that's a way that he maintains relationships and maintains his social circles. It's pretty incredible, right. man. And you remember it. 100% yeah. I do. Yes. Yes, yes. So your book, my man, you know, there's a, we talked about the people coming out of the back room and everything. Can your book help people, you know, especially introverted people express themselves socially a little better? Right. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, there's, it's, it's just knowing what to do that's going to be, uh, uh to, to combat any social awkwardness you may believe that you have or battling imposter syndrome or something like that. Uh, yes, it definitely helps people be be seen, be heard, and just gives simple steps, just like the, the military making of the bed. Gives you really simple steps to just, hey, just do this first, then do this. So you don't have to guess. And you're just following pretty much a checklist. And and it's everything's intuitive. All the steps are really intuitive. So you can just just show up and just Go through the process, and I even tell you how to leave in the book. I even say, when it's time to go, here's how to leave. <laughs> so it's not you know? awkward. <laughs> yeah. Right. Here's there's, the there's best two, way to leave. Let's dive into that in a sec. But first, you said something about imposter syndrome. What does that mean to you? So imposter syndrome, to me, is when you get into a place and then you feel like, wait, I don't know if I should be here. I don't know if I, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel like I fit in with this. Like I was in... Uh, in February, I was in Sri Lanka, and I was at a friend. A friend of mine is a uh, high-powered defense attorney there, and we went to this defense attorney party in Sri Lanka. And I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, "Well, this is." I even made a video about it. Uh, for anyone that's wondering about imposter syndrome, I'm at a defense attorney party in Sri Lanka, and uh, so if you think that you don't fit in somewhere, this is. Uh, a really good scenario where I don't fit in, but I said, I'm going to roll with it and have a good time. So I didn't go in there and try to talk about 
law in Sri Lanka, I just, you know, we found some common ground. We we're talking about some music, talked about the food once again, talked about drinks and talked about uh, some people were dancing. We talked about dancing, talked about some world events and, you know, everything was okay. So there's, uh, I try to tell people that one of the techniques that I use, oh, well, one, one thing is the dream thing. You can say, this is a dream. It's not really happening. You can do anything in your dreams. And that's one way to, that you can trick yourself. Or I like to think uh, I do this thing that I call Nick Noble and Nick Nobody. So when I walk in, I just say, hey, you know, what if I was a nobleman? How would a nobleman behave here? You know, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not a king or anything. I don't have those responsibilities, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a noble. I can come in here. But then uh, when I start talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, then I become Nick Nobody because I don't want to put myself like, hey, I'm looking down my nose at you. I'm just like, hey, I want to engage with you here in this moment, just me and you one-on-one. -on -one. And so I'm not saying that I'm great or small. I'm just in this moment with you. So that's the Nick, yeah. noble Nick Nobody. And maybe talk about the cheese or not wearing underwear. I mean, those, those always <laughs> help, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, well, so the, 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 what that does also is that if you have something funny is when you first meet people, everyone has their wall up, their guard up. But if you kind of can say a little bit something funny, then it helps bring bring that guard down and then you can have the real conversation. So I always <laughs> totally. say, if you can say something embarrassing, <laughs> Uh, if you had something embarrassing happen, I tell people like, so one thing that happened to me that actually happened was I, I say, go to the food. I, I, they had these turkey sandwiches. I started choking on one of the turkey sandwiches and I was like, well, this is embarrassing because I'm going to, I'm just going to fall out here. And then, then I'm going to be known as the guy that doesn't know how to chew his food and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, I gave myself the Heimlich did the self Heimlich on the back of the chair and got the turkey sandwich out. But then I spent the rest of the, the event telling people, Hey, I, I was choking over there earlier and thanks and for I self noticing. <laughs> yeah. I, self -heimlich. I, just made, I just made that into <laughs> a verb, by the way. I hope you noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it helps people. They have a laugh about it. Then usually they will have a story about them choking or something about the Heimlich maneuver. And then that, that brings down that initial barrier. And then we can actually, start having a real conversation. <laughs> You're killing me here today. I love it. You probably didn't have these jokes when you were in the Air Force, right? No, I did not. <laughs> no. What's an Air Force joke? Probably nothing similar to this. <laughs> <laughs> but they have a sense of humor in the Air Force too. Oh, that, that, there is a sense of humor? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking the Marines. I'm sorry. I love the Marines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe they don't. Oh my goodness. What'd you do in the Air Force? I was in fuels, uh, petroleum, oil, and lubrication. So we just, uh, did everything to do with with fuel. We'd put fuel on planes. Would store fuel, transfer fuel. Uh, yeah, everything with fuel. That's pretty fantastic. You know, I I love all the different people, all the that become like components to make an operation happen. I've always yes. enjoyed that because you know there's there's the leader that exists. You know, I mean, in this case, it's, it's probably the pilot. You think, oh, the pilot's the badass. You know, and but the pilot can't go anywhere unless you freaking fuel up his plane. Right, it's, exactly. It's impossible for that. You know, you're talking about transporting fuel too. What about, were you responsible for orders or responsible for getting fuel even on the carrier? Were you on a carrier? No, no, no. That's the, that That's would a, be the Navy. That would be the Navy. Yeah. So I was just on a, I was on an Air Force base in Japan and yeah, we just had these big storage tanks. We'd uh, bring fuel in, test out the fuel to make sure it was clean, dry, and serviceable. I know people at home listening are like, wow, that sounds fast, clean, dry, and serviceable. Yeah, but it's important. It has to, because you're putting it on these, these like super expensive jets, you know, so you can't have any uh, issues. Yeah, it's not like a $20,000 Honda that you're going to fill <laughs> up at the gas station. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so, do you have any advice for introverts that are struggling in the business world? Because I know this is a, a huge thing and th there's a lot of genius introverts that exist. So it's like there's genius extroverts, you know, you don't have to be either one to be really good at what you do, but sometimes th there's some struggles that are there on both sides, you know, cause I mean, extroverts can have issues actually getting down and doing the work. I know that, you know, speaking of myself, dude, I, when you said that you get drained as an introvert, I know that because I, I'm the exact opposite as an extrovert. I get filled up and energized when I'm with other people, even, you know, having a podcast like this, that's what fuels me for the day. And when we started batching these, you know, rather than doing like sporadic throughout the month, I do five episodes a day back to back, two days a month. 
Yeah, so you're number two today. I still have three more and a guest spot tonight. So there's four more shows that I'm doing just today alone. My team was like, man, how, you know, are you going to be able to last? You know, and everything. I'm like, I'll, no worries. You know, I'll do this because there's there's things to do throughout the day. You know, obviously I ate a good healthy breakfast, made myself my normal breakfast this morning, but then I had a second breakfast that was a freaking stack of pancakes, protein pancakes <laughs> to make sure that that I was fueled up for the day. You know, yes. but, but then it's the energy, man, because the conversation, I mean, even in just today, you've already thrown me off and maybe laugh probably more than some of the other episodes that I've had in, in the recent future, just because of the, the hilarious comments that you have and ways to overcome <laughs> being an, an introvert when you're in public or in a networking circle. So in yes. business though, man, you know, specifically, how does somebody, cause it can be nerve wracking for an extrovert or for, sorry, for an introvert, right? right? Especially yes. if you have to go into a meeting to where you might be pitching, you know, a deal to a multitude of people that are around a conference table. Now you're put in a position that you don't want to be in, but you know you need to seal the deal. You know, how do you appear calm, confident, and approachable in a situation like that? Oh man, the calm, confident, and approachable. So that I would use what I call Duke cookie face. And so <laughs> Dude, you're killing me. <laughs> got cheese, so no underwear and Duke cookie face. We just keep rolling. That's, that, that's the, that's the easiest way to, to, uh, to handle that situation. And so that's, that's, so you're going to look cool, calm, confident in, in any social situation and especially in your, your high profile business meetings and all that. And so uh, what you're going to need to do and I developed this when I was at a, a holiday party with a, a girl I was dating at the time because she knew everybody there, but I didn't know anyone. And so I, I knew that people were going to be looking at me, you know, sizing me up, kind of seeing, casting their judgment on me, whatever, and uh, trying to see what kind of guy is this? Do I like him? Do I not? You know, what's, and I can't really talk to everybody, but I'm going to be sitting there. So I said, uh, okay, so how do I need to sit? And so when I'm sitting there and anyone in a meeting, you do this same thing. Uh, we go back to that, that Duke reference, the like Nick Noble, Nick Nobody. The, uh, I would say, how would a, a nobleman sit? And then, or a, uh, you know, uh, the lords and ladies. So if you're a, a, a Duke or a duchess, how would they sit? And so I would sit in that manner. So you're not stiff and you're not slouching. You're just, you have like a, a nice, comfortable, good posture. And that's how you have your body. And then for your face, uh, I used to have, you know, like resting bastard face because people used to say, <laughs> they, they used to say, uh, do you want to fight? Do you want to, do you have a problem with me? And I'd say, what, have a problem with you? And they said, your face, you look like you want to hit me. And I was like, oh, I need to, no, I, I want to, I need to change that. So to make sure you have the proper face, uh, I, I would say, so you got that, you're sitting like a duke or a duchess. And now you're going to imagine you just walked into your best friend's house and you are hit with the aroma of fresh baked cookies and you love cookies and you know that they're going to offer you cookies soon. So you're not going to just have this giant cheesy grin, but you're going to have a nice, quiet, pleasant look on your face like, hey, cookies are imminent. Cookies are coming. And so if you have that, you're going to have this, <laughs> this glow You'll have a, a light glow about you because, hey, cookies are coming, right? <laughs> and so, so you're sitting like a duke and you have this, you have the duke cookie face. And so you have this nice glow and people just, people, it's radiating from you. People look at you and they say, what's going on? <laughs> he wants this, cookies. That's what's going yeah, on. This, this guy is <laughs> awesome. And then so when, when you look around the room and if you catch eye contact with somebody, nod and telepathically say, cookies are coming. And you know, I don't know what they receive on their end, but they, it, whatever it is, they're like, hey, this guy seems cool. This girl seems cool because, you know, you're just sending that like, hey, you know, cookies are coming. And so, but you don't, <laughs> you know, you don't have to say it out loud because then they'd be like, what are you doing? Are cookies coming? <laughs> he's, he's a little psycho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're going to find the other this... introverts and they're going to be like, what cookies? I love cookies. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, where are the cookies yeah, yeah. at? <laughs> and so <laughs> you do. So do cookie face or duchess cookie face for the ladies. And if you do that, if you sit like a duke or a duchess and then you imagine you're about to be offered cookies, cookies are coming, you will look very confident. You'll be calm. You'll have the right demeanor. You'll be giving off a glow. People will want to be around you. And when I've used this and when my students have used this, people just approach you. They're, they're drawn in and they don't know why, but it's because hey, cookies are coming. 
<laughs> you've, you've thrown me off base so much today, man. This not, that doesn't happen too much, you know, <laughs> with the cheese, the, the no underwear, and now it's the cookie face because the cookies are coming. For everybody listening, just always remember that the cookies are coming. Okay, cookies are coming. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's a See? fantastic place, man. Dude, people can... Nick, thank you, my man. You made me laugh this morning. ConnectedIntrovert.com, no, right? Yes, ConnectedIntrovert.com. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, thank you for being on. You've really made my morning. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. It's, it's great to I be I want to go eat a cookie, and there's some here, so that's good. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> oh, see, and I see your face. You're smiling. I know. You look approachable. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, brother. Thanks, my man. What's shaking? Thank you for joining me on the All In Podcast. Click the subscribe button and smash that bell for notifications. Text me. 312-535-8520. Follow me on social media at Mr. Rick Jordan. See you next episode. I am Rick Jordan and I approve this message.